welcome back to her story. I've pretty much run out of keywords to search for at this point, except for one, and that is affair. I want to see if there's any more mentions of the affair that I believe it was Eve mentioned Simon was having. Yeah, I think Eve said that Simon was having an affair. Yeah, it must have been in this clip. What did your wife do? She didn't clean you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Yeah, that's where she mentions the affair. You're reaching here. And I don't know why. No. I've never cheated on anyone. I've never taken anything from anyone. Simon is dead. But I have my baby to care for. Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? An affair? Simon wasn't having an affair. Okay, so this must be Hannah here. So this is obviously Eve, with the tattoo. And this must be Hannah. Yeah, so Eve thought that Simon was having an affair. Hannah didn't. Hmm. Unfortunately, that didn't really give me any more keywords. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to start digging. Um, let's just type in some common words and just try to find some, you know, some new lead to follow up on. Phone? Yeah. Well, they have one for the glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. Oh, it's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. Phone. Let's search for phone. Sure. Yes, of course, if that would help. Will you phone the house to let me know when you want to come round? Then I can make sure that I'm there. What about mobile? Like mobile phone? Just one result. Alright, let's do some more random digging. To search for super common terms. Is. A black coffee, thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. Ha ha ha. Very funny. I hope you got the death sentence just for making that pun. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't... Whatever she did, if she even did anything, I'm sure it wasn't deserving of the death sentence. Although that pun was pretty bad. That was a pretty bad pun. Alright, so I've done the, I've done is. What about and? There's a couple. No, not drugs. I mean, he drinks, but never very much. He goes to the pub and has one or two... Sometimes we go together. He drinks wine with food, but nah, he doesn't have any kind of drinking problem. Sure, I think. I do all the bills and paperwork and handle all the money stuff, so it should be easy for me to find. Do you want them dropped off to you? All right, more digging. Some other common word. Uh, how about I? That's got to be super, super common. Oh, I've already looked at all those. Oh, here's a bunch of new ones. There's no couple stuff. A stupid argument. Nothing specific. No one knows how to push your buttons better than those you're close to. Um. Hoover, my dust, every week. Maybe less. 
I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust, and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks is okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day, you know, ran an ordered house. You know how that generation is, putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. Okay, there's a bunch of keywords here. She mentioned Doug and I think Eleanor. Yeah, I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust, and she said, "Okay." So that's two more people I have to search for. Could they have been my parents' fingerprints? I'm not sure how long they last for, but is that possible? Fingerprints. I should search for fingerprints too. Fingerprints. Okay, that's three, three more keywords to search for. Look, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror, and he gave it to me. Look for fingerprints. Ooh, a bunch of mentions of fingerprints. Fine. I mean, I've had my fingerprints taken before. I once put my hand on the oven. <laughs> all, right, all right, so that must be Hannah, because there's no tattoo. They're taking your fingerprints. Fingerprints. And that, I think, is still Hannah as well. Because I think she was wearing that, those same clothes when she mentioned that um, Simon wasn't having an affair. So I think that's still Hannah. Yes. Yeah. I would have cleaned them. I changed the sheets too. With the fingerprints in all those places. Really? Go on then. Take the cup, run your fingerprints, they'll match. Okay, um, she, I, I guess it was Hannah mentioned that she didn't like, like, fine, take my fingerprints. And here she seems really pissed off, so that must not be Hannah, that must be Eve, I guess? All right, well, that's it for fingerprints, so let's search for Doug and Eleanor. Yeah, I've been round to Doug and Eleanor's, and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Okay. I parked up on the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. Walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. I looked quickly in the living room nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. 
That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Bug and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. Fair enough. Are Doug and Eleanor maybe the owners of the pub? Uh, the Rock? Yeah. 1984. It was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. Oh, wait a minute. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. Okay, and yeah, so that's where they were, the, the parents, um, Simon's parents, who they were living with while she was pregnant. Okay, yeah, so Doug and Eleanor are Simon's parents. Baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police. A forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. It was just awful. Wait, it was because of the heat? The, the reason both her parents died at the same time was because of the heat? I mean, I know heat waves can be dangerous, especially to the, the elderly and sick, but... Both of her parents died at the same time because of heat? That sounds really implausible to me. Yes. I speak with Eleanor at least once a day. Not that there's anything much to say. <laughs> oh, God. I hope it wasn't too hot. Yes. I wonder if there's... Hmm. I'm getting super, super suspicious here, right? It could just be nothing, right? She just dropped her coffee, whatever it happens. But, like, I'm wondering if she was doing it to hide something. Like, to avoid talking about what she was about to talk about or something. There's really no way to tell whether it was on purpose or on accident. Yes. Hmm. I'm probably just being paranoid. Alright, well that found six entries. What is the next entry? The sixth, because it only shows the first five. What if I show a generic keyword that could be in any of them? Ah. So that's got to be the sixth one. This is the third day running you've called me in. This is Eve, I, I speak think. to Doug and Eleanor every day. And they say you've been asking a lot of questions. Wait, I thought this was Eve. But if she's talking about talking to Doug and Eleanor... Eleanor every day, then I think this must be Hannah. Questions about me. Should I be worried? Am I a suspect? All right, well, that's it for Eleanor. Let's search for Doug. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been pressure. Okay, she said, Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. Got a job. Okay, so she's talking about while living with Simon's parents and while she was pregnant. Or, well, either while she was pregnant or maybe for a little bit after she lost the baby. She's talking about contributing to the household and getting a job that Doug found her. 
Also, I just remembered something she said, right? She said she lived with um, Doug and Eleanor, lived with Simon's parents for, I think she said a few months after she lost the baby until, like, until something happened, right? Until, like, some incident. I think that incident was probably her parents dying in the summer. I think. Not just... That's what it sounds like to me. Let me see if we can find that clip. Um... Lived um, until no. I don't remember what she said exactly. Well, I don't remember how to find the clip, but I just found some new ones. Unless it was this one where she said it. Boxes. Oh wait, this is where she talked about finding Simon's body, right? Pulled them open, saw the body. Yeah, that's her talking about the body. Alright, so that's not it. Anyway, let's look at the new ones. They said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms, grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone. And no one had any reason to hurt them. Hmm. So... So... The reason that they died seems to be, at least on the surface. Doug picked poisonous mushrooms, cooked food for both of them, they both ate and they both died. I mean... That sounds plausible. Like, that could happen. You'd think if he was picking mushrooms all the time, though, that he'd be pretty good at identifying them. That's the thing. Hmm. I think I want to search for I'd mushroom. Like yeah, I want to search for mushroom as a keyword. See if there's any more mentions of it. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. Okay, this is definitely Eve. It was so huge. <laughs> It must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture. The lights work. Mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it. We invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork for them all. Passports, diaries, and gave them all really elaborate stories. Once, a moth got trapped in there. We'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. Oh, you heartless killer. She clearly murdered Simon if she could kill a moth as a kid. It's a slippery slope. It just became our way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things. And we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. Oh my god, is she talking about them swapping places without anybody else knowing? Oh my god, she is. Same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. Mm-hmm. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen 
inside our imaginations. And we would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them. Yeah, they're talking about swapping places. And in fact, who's to say they haven't swapped places right now? Right? Um, wasn't it supposedly Eve who said that she doesn't have any roots anywhere? She sings and... But like, she, I mean... As far as we know, she doesn't like have a birth certificate or anything. I mean, maybe she's gotten one as an adult or something. I don't know. You know, if she's come to a police station to be interviewed and given her fingerprints and whatnot, then... Then she's got to be in the system in some way. So I don't know. Maybe she's gotten that stuff. But you know, she's kind of, she's kind of um, she doesn't have any family. Yeah, she doesn't have any family except for Hannah. Um. So if she doesn't have any roots, and maybe she doesn't have anything to lose. Uh, maybe they swapped or or something. I don't know. S something like that. I can't I can't follow that to any sort of uh, exact conclusion, but them swapping for some reason to help each other out in some way wouldn't surprise me. Okay, um, so I've got a couple keywords to search for mushroom and dollhouse, but there's something bugging me. There's something bugging me. Hold on one second. Hmm. I guess it was nothing. Yeah, sorry if you're expecting some <laughs> massive breakthrough, but I was just thinking about that one translation that I did before of the knock code, the bid boy bid hannon or whatever, that just didn't seem right. And I was thinking, like, what if it's just backwards or something, or what if it's an anagram? So I just did some stuff with it, and no, it, it doesn't seem to be. Anyway, alright, so we got those two keywords, dollhouse and mushroom. Was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen. You can probably check that. We never go into the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed. I was still pretty sick of the STD. STD? And I came down New keyword. Morning. They were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up a lot. And I'd slept through it. The police said it was the mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. He used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognize them. And there's no way you would have picked death caps. But the police believed that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. Okay, so this is Eve, I think. Um, he used to take us picking with him. How to recognize us? Us? Us is an Eve and Hannah. So, so um, Eleanor, the mother of Eve and Hannah wasn't told that Eve even existed to begin with, right? The, the midwife, Florence, told Eleanor that Eve had died and then took Eve for herself to raise. 
However, this is, again, I believe Eve talking here, talking about Doug. No, wait. Oh, I'm getting the parents mixed up, aren't I? No. Yes. Oh, God, what's happening? My brain's exploding. Okay, Doug and Eleanor. Doug and Eleanor are Simon's parents. Yeah, Doug and Eleanor are Simon's parents. So, I don't actually know the name of Hannah and Eve's parents. Yeah, so she's not talking about Doug and Eleanor. She's talking about her her parents. But anyway, yeah, so it seems like Hannah and Eve's parents at some point actually came to know, you know, that Eve was alive and that she never died. Okay, let's follow up on the lead. She mentioned an STD. She was up in the attic, like, recovering from an STD. And yeah, it looks like this clip, if you look at the timestamp, is right before this one that I already watched. So this is right before what we just watched. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It was like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was... Sex with strangers. Drunk guys I'd met in clubs. In parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. Hmm. Okay, I think that just leaves one keyword left that I have written down, and that's the dollhouse. Oh, there's a bunch of mentions of a dollhouse. Yes. I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back. Me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Inherited it from her parents. So she's talking about after her parents died, she inherited the home. Let's see. It reminded me of being a girl. A dollhouse in the attic. Old things. So this is Hannah. I didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yeah, God, I mean, it's nice to get a house, but moving into your parents' house where they died? That would be so hard, and yeah, sleeping in their room would be even harder. Yes, I read a lot as a child, and watch lots of TV, then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. Yes. Add. 
Mm. She recognized me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. There was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Okay, attic. I think that's a new keyword that I want to search for. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Hannah moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernized wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. Wait a minute. So are you telling me that um, Eve actually did move in and she stayed in the attic? Oh my fucking god, I'm just imagining, if that's actually what happened... Then does that mean they kept swapping where Simon, you know, one night would be having dinner with Eve, who he thought was Hannah, and the other night would be having dinner with actual Hannah? If so, that's the creepiest fucking thing! That's terrifying! Oh my god! thinking you're spending time with the same person, but it's actually just flip-flopping between two different people. Ha, ah, ah, ha, I don't like it. I don't like it. Alright, let's look for this attic. Twelve entries. Alright, there's a lot more entries that I want to find, but looks like there's one here that I haven't seen. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? She's talking about them f finding hair in the attic around the body? Hair that isn't hers, or...? Alright, um, attic... Eve. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. She didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom, <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. <laughs> Mum was amazed. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really, really funny. Okay, some other keywords I can uh, tie with attic to get to the other entries. I've seen six of them, and there's six more. What are the other six? Hmm. No, I've already searched for dollhouse. That wouldn't do it. Oh, hmm. Hode. Yeah, hode. That's, that's a word. Attic. I don't know. Let's, let's go with the easy stuff. Attic the... No. Is. A. And. Oh, come on. Oh, here's one. It lasted about six months. I tried to carry on, but everything was different. Hannah insisted I not pretend to be her around Simon, let alone sleep with him. We didn't share him like the others. The rules had changed. Me living in the attic had become weird in a way it hadn't been before. Hmm. 
So it sounds like Hannah wasn't really into sharing Simon or sharing their lives, or maybe she was growing out of it and wanted to be separate people. It lasted about six months. It lasted. It lasted. Is that... I guess she's talking about living in the attic. It lasted about six months. Hmm. Um, hmm. Attic and what? God, there's more entries. There's five... Yeah, five entries that mention Attic that I'm missing. Dang it. Alright, well, I'm out of keywords at this point. Oh, here's something. Cute. You must love them very much. What ages are they? No. I mean, he was... Everyone loves Simon. He was so... nice to everyone. He loves me. Thanks. Please find Simon. I love him so much. I can actually type my response. Uh, no. I'll hang a bit longer. Buzz when you're ready. Huh. Okay, so, you know, I was wondering, how does this game end, right? With it being so free-flowing with the information that you access, you know, when does... Yeah, when, when does it end? I guess the answer is, well, once you discover a certain amount, I guess it's just whenever you want. I certainly don't want to end yet. I've looked at, uh, looks like about a half, maybe? Yeah, I've still got a lot to go. Hmm... I think I already searched for that, didn't I? Yeah. I'm really not sure what to search for. I'm missing so many entries, but I don't know what to search for. Um, she mentioned she likes to... S she sings, right? For, for a living? Like she sings, plays guitar and stuff? Really? Okay. Here's the rest. Oh, the wind and the rain Yes, he made 
tune that the fool could play was Oh, the wind and the rain Yes, the only tune that the fool could play was Oh, the dreadful wind and rain Anything you sing maybe used as evidence against you? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh my god, that song is so creepy. So already it was a, a song about, um, what was it, two sisters or two friends walking by and being jealous and then holding one of them under and drowning them and then they float out to sea and then they get found by a, a, a ship. And then a fiddler comes by and starts to dismember her and uses her hair for a fiddle bow and <laughs> makes fiddle pegs out of her finger bones. And a whole fiddle out of her breastbone? Oh my fucking god. What is wrong with this song? What is wrong with that song? There, that's my custom tag. Um, hmm. Alright, so she mentioned singing. I already searched for guitar. Um, she said she used to, what, play in... Or, not, not used to, but does play in... Was it clubs? I guess that's the one time she mentions it. Uh, you know, I've never searched for money, have I? Money, money, money. Yeah, here's some new ones. No. Everyone loved Simon. He's a glazier who doesn't have much money. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think that would be the detective probably asking, like, does anybody have a reason to want to hurt Simon? If you put me on, you've been framed. <laughs> I want the money. Hmm. I'm just gonna start typing random stuff. Fairy tales. Stories about lost princesses, evil witches, Magical mirrors and lost children. So you see, even before I knew the truth, I'd found it in those stories. If one of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. A grazed knee, a bruise. When I lost my tooth first, we had to pull our hands to match. Oh God. Oh. Once, I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. But she always went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. She snuck a frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. Mm. So much of our bodies was synchronized anyway. We started our period on the same day. All our childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. I can't remember if I searched for palindrome before. No, no, I know she mentioned it. I must have spelled it wrong. How do you spell palindrome? I'm going to alt-tab out right now. Palindrome. Oh, I had it right, but it's only one L. Gotcha. Yeah, I've already searched for that. Um, what about fairy tale? Hmm. Sorry. Sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just... Reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. And Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. Oh, and your bees in colour. Rapunzel, I should probably search for that too, because I know she's mentioned it a bunch of times. And the glaziers. I worked there some weekends, and someone had a part time job there too. 
that was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then, he had a sense of craftsmanship. It wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus, he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. Wait. Isn't this Eve? She has the tattoo. I thought this is Eve. Simon was quite more thoughtful than the other boys. It sounds like she's talking about the first time she met Simon. I'm so confused. Wasn't it Hannah and Simon that got married? Not Eve and Simon? Or is this maybe when they swapped? This might just be them swapping. Eve and Hannah swapping. Maybe it was Hannah that worked there. But Eve just swapped out. Than the other boys. Hmm. Simon never cheated on me. He was devoted to me, and I was devoted to him. Nothing in life is easy. We were good to each other. Life isn't a fairy tale. And do what you can. I'm so confused. That makes it sound like she is the one, Eve is the one who married Simon. What? This game is messing with my head. I don't even know what's real anymore. Who is who and who, I, d I don't know. No, I have never been unfaithful. I've never cheated on Simon. And that's Hannah, I think. And this is Eve. Have I ever cheated on Simon? You asked that question yesterday. Wait. Wait, so this, this is Eve then. You asked that question yesterday. This is where they just asked it. And it's from the day before. Have I ever cheated on Simon? You asked that question yesterday. But I thought this was Hannah. This has got to be Hannah. I mean, her... Look at the tattoo. You can see how far the tattoo goes down on her arm, right? And then look here. You would see it. Slightly. Only slightly, but you would see it poking out. Look at where the tattoo is. You would see it. Like the bottom fourth of it. No. Look at her arm. No tattoo. You would absolutely see it. She's in basically the same position. I'm very confused. Okay, I'm thinking of two possibilities here. Um, I mean, these aren't the only possibilities, but there's two specific possibilities I'm considering. One is that um, she, Eve actually believes she is Hannah, like she's having trouble keeping her own identity. And so this is actually Eve, here. And this is actually Hannah, here. And here Eve thinks she's Hannah. The other is that, what if they're not actually different people? No, that doesn't make any sense, because of the tattoo. Right? That wouldn't make any sense. If they're not actually different people, then the tattoo doesn't make any sense. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead, it doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Cheated his expenses. What, is, what does that mean? Some sort of fraud? Something for money? Taxes or something like that? Because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Oxford. Expenses. Oxford. Expenses. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna end this episode there. So I've made some pretty good progress. I haven't made any, like, huge breakthroughs of, oh my god, that's something I, I didn't know, and, like, it changes everything. That hasn't happened again yet. But I have learned lots and lots of little bits and pieces. Yeah, I've made some good progress here. We learned... Yeah, so let's just recap some of the major things. So we learned about, um... About Hannah and Eve's parents and how they died. The death cap mushroom. Apparently they both ate it. Although it sounds suspicious and it sounded like Eve or Hannah was surprised that her dad would pick a death cap mushroom because they believe that he's, you know, better at identifying mushrooms than that. But he wouldn't pick a death cap mushroom. So, it seems a bit odd, but there you go. And we also learned that Eve apparently moved in into their parents' home. After, after Hannah and Eve's parents died, Hannah and Simon moved into their home because it had been given to them after their death given to given to Hannah after her parents died so Hannah and Simon moved in and Eve actually moved in with them and hid in the attic where Simon apparently never went and she just stayed there for it sounds like six months hmm and then something about cheating his expenses for a romantic getaway which is something that I plan on looking into next So, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to look up on that lead of the Oxford getaway.